So we all know that there is a GPU shortage in the world at the moment. But the question is, do you actually need a dedicated graphics card to do video editing, for example? Or let's add into the mix photo editing or other creative tasks. I've got Benji Kaiser from Benji Kaiser YouTube channel. <laughs> and he is actually testing lots and lots of different laptops. So it will be interesting to uh, actually ask him as well, because you can get iGPU on a laptop as well, as well as a dedicated graphics card. So Ben, what's your first thought? Thoughts. Um, do you think people need a dedicated graphics card on a laptop PC or do you think the iGPUs have gone quite good? Yeah, I would say you 100% need a dedicated GPU because everybody is editing 8K these days. Everybody can watch 8K. 8K is everywhere. And if you're not on 8K, you're a loser. I'm totally kidding. Nobody is editing 8K, barely. People can barely watch 8K. <laughs> This can only see 1080p. Um, and so I just wanted to have a funny little hot take there. What are you doing? That is the real question. Um, because most people uh, only need to edit 1080p and maybe 4K. When I started my channel, I edited 1080p for the first three, uh, two and a half years. That's all I shot. And so for me, I could have easily done that on a number of... Um, Intel or Ryzen laptops that are out today with very little issues. I mean, smooth playback in the timeline, great export times, you know, no problem. And so I would say if, you know, you're shooting social media content, uh, you're shooting, you know, some fun stuff just on the go, then yeah, iGPU is totally fine for stuff like that. So that's my initial hot take after the joke of not shooting AKs for losers. I mean, be before I'm going to ask you uh, a question whether you think everything has moved from 1080p to a 4K standard now, mm, interesting. Um, I want to add that um, I think it depends also if you're a photo or video creator. Um, I have yeah. created this. Uh, I'm about to actually create this video on my channel separately, but um, I think photographers often overspend on a GPU. Like if they're purely doing photography, Apart yeah, hundred percent. You know, don't do anything else if you're not gaming. If you're not got any other interest for the GPU, honestly, photographers like okay, this is quite a radical quote, but you don't actually need a GPU. Like you just yeah, buy I would the totally cheapest. Agree. You just buy the cheapest GPU and all your budget on a CPU. Um, yeah, if you're because, building a PC, we're talking about you know, Laurie talks about PC builds. I talk about yeah. laptops. So if you're building a PC, yeah, go all in on that CPU. Uh, for what sure. about laptops though? Could you still get like a lower end? GPU and a higher end CPU on a laptop. See, that's that can become an issue. So, like, usually, as we all know, if you want, if you have a more powerful c CPU, then the mm -hmm. laptop company assumes, you know, what they say about assuming, um, that you need a more powerful GPU. And so, that's usually the issue is finding that 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 imbalance situation so you can save some money. Um, one laptop that comes to mind that actually does that quite well. Uh, is something like the uh, Asus Republic of Gamer uh, Flow X13. You know, you can get it with a really nice, powerful CPU and more of a mid to lower end GPU. And I don't mean lower, lower. I just mean like not a 3060 or 3070, which totally raises the price of your machine. Yeah. Do you remember uh, what was, uh, sorry, just literally <laughs> add to that yeah. laptop over there. Asus yeah. just released like the tablet thing, you know? Yeah, the so that's a Z laptop. Yeah, that's a Z... Because that's going to have 12900K on it. But yeah, they said the it'll GPU have 12900. Um, and I don't know the GPU that's going to come with off the top of my head. Because um, that could be very interesting for photographers. I, I don't for know. sure. Ben's, Ben's probably going to check it out later on. Oh, this yeah. Year. I've already reached out to my, in, uh, my Asus contact. I'm like, hey, girl, hook me up, please. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely want to look at that. But yeah, that could be a very interesting one for photographers. I don't think they could fit a super large GPU in there because it's such a thin piece of yeah. uh, equipment. So that could be good. Um, but as far as like laptops are concerned, yeah, if you have like Ryzen 7 5800U, if you have a Intel i7 1195G7 or an 1165G7, those would be great for video editing 1080p, maybe even some light 4K. Because like I did the test on my channel with um, mm -hmm. one of the rate latest Ryzen 5000 series APUs, the 5700G. And yes. um, I built the whole PC with it and then did the benchmark for Photoshop and Lightroom. And then I thought, do you know what? I'm actually curious, how much is it going to improve if we add a dedicated graphics card? 
So yep. I added an RTX 3060 Ti, which is mm -hmm. quite a decent graphics card. A lot of graphics power compared to the iGPU. Oh yeah. And honestly, some of the benchmarks were lower yep. than before. Like That'll honestly, happen. I could say it's a zero difference between like that. There is, but that's interesting because Photoshop still has like a GPU score on the budget bench uh, score. So I'm yeah. just wondering, like, what does that do? Because I still got the same like GPU score ish, um, but the <clears> score, <throat> like overall score, was like literally the same. So I didn't see any improvement by adding like whatever, like a nine hundred dollar. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like the whole idea of GPU. Like yeah, it's like the whole idea of like graphics versus video versus like renders. So like when it comes to Photoshop, you're dealing with like still graphics. You're not dealing with graphics in motion. And so it, I always say like a, a GPU should be called like a VPU, like a video uh, video processing unit, because it's anything usually in motion that it's processing. It's not always processing still things. And everything that you're doing inside of Photoshop, outside of like creating GIFs and stuff like that, is still graphics. So whether you're a graphic designer, oh, you're yeah. a photo editor, whatever it might be. I see where that confusion can come for someone who's like started for the first time or just, you know, a beginner doesn't know like which tech means what. It can be a bit confusing. But, Absolutely. Uh, what, I, what I want to also mention is like the Intel iGPUs for the, with the latest um, 12th gen CPUs, mm -hmm. the iGPU has some killer uh, encoders and decoders inside the GPU. So I did a little test on the channel with without the dedicated graphics card, just the 12600K or 12900K actually I did. Like imagine your PC there, you pull the graphics card out, like, okay, how good is the video editing performance? And to be honest, if you're just using the encoding of a video without any color grade, any effects on, then yeah. honestly, there, there wasn't really a difference. If you look at H.264 and H.265 codecs that are accelerated on the hardware of the iGPUs inside. Yes. But as as soon as I added a Lumetri color on the top, which is actually accelerated on the GPU dedicated graphics card, the CUDA cores. You're from saying NVIDIA color actually. grading? Yeah, color grading. You Sorry, added color that's grading. A color gr that's a yep. color grading effect on yep. Premiere Pro. If you're on DaVinci Resolve, then it will be, you know, just lots of graphs or whatever you put on the yep. top there then suddenly it started lagging like very 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 bad because the iGPU doesn't have a lot of like the graphics power to process yep. a lot of this like you know graphics video moving graphics but it was very good at actually decoding or encoding the video certain codecs so i think if someone is really on a budget just to like kind of give a suggestion to someone yeah and you're 1080p editing that's what Ben Ben mentioned as well. Or um, light 4K editing, depending on a co codec, then you could actually build a system without the dedicated graphics card and start saving up while still editing on it. Um, you could do that. I think it's it's actually possible. You can depending on a codec. I think it's if it's mirrorless camera codec, you most likely can do that. So especially yeah. if it's 1080p. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think like the biggest thing is knowing what you're doing and never like never like over buying if you don't see a clear use case in the future. Like one of the worst things you could do is under buy. And then like a month later you start video editing. Like, cause then it's like, okay, you already yeah. spent that chunk to get a computer and then you didn't buy the right one. I've run into that problem. Cause you know, I just didn't know much about computers years ago. And yeah. you know, it's been a journey of learning and learning and learning. But for me, like I would have been better suited to know how to buy a higher end performance piece. But if you're just going to be doing some basic stuff, you'll be fine uh, not having this big, massive GPU. The problem is people get into something that's lower end, needed to have like multi-cam 4K projects with graphics, and all of a sudden they're bottlenecked and frustrated. So to <laughs> conclude, whether you need a dedicated graphics card or not, then what's <laughs> your thoughts? Um, I would say use case is extremely important. Um, know what you're doing uh it, as a whole most people will need one yes yeah as a side I'll note think... there's a lot who won't if you're a social media content creator like you're just shooting 1080p editing 1080p exporting 1080p you really don't um but if you're somebody who wants to kind of shoot 4k to have a better quality experience on social and have a better quality experience when posting stuff so people can watch it on their tvs then yeah you should be you should be in 4k do you know what i just realized I just throw our video 
all on the head by saying that Apple GPUs are all iGPUs. Oh, for sure. And you don't need a dedicated graphics card if you go with an Apple M1 Pro or Max. But you're paying the same price as getting one. So that kind of seemed to me, that's where we really delineate the question because this is all about budget. When people say, do I need a dedicated GPU or not? It's not because they want a dedicated GPU or they don't want one. It's because it's more flipping expensive. Um, And so like, it's not about the fact that it's a dedicated or iGPU, like it's some sort of tech nerd competition. It's budget oriented. So yeah, you could get an I, yeah, IGP 100% with the MacBook Pro M1 Max, but you're out $3,700 after tax for the base model. You know what I'm saying? I understand, I understand. But I just understand. Yeah. Uh, I just realized that the terms we're saying by IGPU, actually, yes. in Apple world, they've just you know put everything just kicked in, it in one face. pot and just sold yeah. everything together. Totally. And that's it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think on that uh, bombshell, it's time to end this video. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you have any other comments, questions, you know, just absolutely angering thoughts, we're very uh, interested in hearing those in the comment section below. So please do that. (laughs) Likes if you enjoyed this video, subs if you'd like to see more, and we'll see you in the next video. Absolutely.